I wish I could, did that, yeah. Um, I was playing guitar for about 10 years now. Oh, really? I started playing guitar in seventh grade, and I would go into my PE teacher's uh, room at lunch, and me and my friends would all play guitar. Um, and also, I was invited to a band, and I knew nothing. So we'd all go in the garage and just be terrible together. Um, and like then, really, you went in, like, in, you couldn't play. We're yeah. Like, okay, I'm just going to start strumming this thing. Basically, like, I, I could play maybe for a lease, and our amplifiers were so bad that um, it would pick up radio broadcast. And we'd all play together, and we'd play, like, Panic! at the Disco, and it, it so was funny. Yeah, it was terrible. Um, but people encouraged us, and. Uh, so, what, what was, like, the, the, the moment, though? What was the moment that you actually said, no, I want to actually start playing music? Like, why did you pick up that guitar mm. and it's like was it I mean because before like we got into this garage but yeah yeah like you know, so 10 years ago what was like what was that first moment of picking up that guitar I think it was uh Stevie Ray Vaughan I listened to a lot of Stevie Ray Vaughan with okay. a lot of classic rock and then I bought a DVD of how to play guitar and I was sitting in my room on a floor court on 38th that's where okay. I grew up a lot of my life um and I tuned my guitar for the first time and I played an A chord and it just hit me and there was nothing. There was nothing like it, you know. I think it's cool. Yeah, cause most people don't get that experience. But because if I picked up a guitar and I started strumming it, it doesn't sound like music, <laughs> but or a chord or yeah. anything. Yeah. But when you actually play your first chord there, I can understand that. It's like, oh, this is actually an instrument. Yeah, it like, felt good. And I just yeah. I played the A chord for I think for like an hour or two, <laughs> the strumming it. So, but you've done more than actually play guitar. You're also now you sing. Yeah. Of course, you know you have your about your um your you're a solo artist i guess you can say mostly uh, i got two bands i have a rock band and then i have this act and uh it's funny how like i feel like most musicians have that yeah it's like you know you gotta you have your you know, multi-faceted person um so what are some of your influences like when let's say when you were like 10 years ago you mentioned panic at the disco there yeah um i mean mainly back then and it's still true today is like the beatles led zeppelin uh, Pink Floyd, I love Pink Floyd, um, and just classic rock, and then this new act is Nathaniel Rateliff, the band, uh, and like John Mayer kind of vibes. Okay. Yeah. And do you feel like that actually influences your music? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I listen to all kinds of music though, and so those are the music that's relevant, Yeah. I listen to classical, you know, jazz, everything. Okay. Well, that, I think that's good. I think you're like, you visit, uh a musician man kind of like you know it's like it's, it's sometimes like you know when you appreciate it more you can appreciate just music in general oh absolutely yeah so you have um you have some releases already that yes. are out there in the world um, but you have a new one coming up in about a month right yeah so my rock band's got stuff out on spotify and itunes and all that but uh this new act nothing yet but we're gonna have something out in the next month awesome cool yeah. so um do we want to play a song from that by chance or, sure or what do you, how do you want to start was i feel like we should like start the hour with some music i want to start with a different song but i will announce when i play the song that's that sounds on. good okay yeah. so what's this song this song's called uh keep on chasing rainbows okay yeah sounds good Packed your own bags, bought a ticket to the north, trying to grab a piece of the promised land. Got your spade, purged all the cloth you made, and traded in our love for a little glory. So goodbye for now. Wish I could change your little mind somehow But no, you can't teach the blind to see you So keep on chasing some rainbows Till you find your pot of gold And if it don't shine as bright as you've been told You can trace your footsteps back to me Oh, back on down the line Something purer than gold 
Oh, don't you know you're gonna find all right? Oh, oh. Remember the way in which we sway While Nora sang us away Well honey how could you forget that I wouldn't trade it for the world And all the victories I've taught And all the blood I've spilled to get by So goodbye for now Wish I could change your little mind somehow But no, you can't teach the blind to seal So keep on chasing rainbows Till you find your pot of gold And if it don't shine as bright as you've been taught You can trace your footsteps back to me Oh, back on down the line Something you're a Oh, don't you know you're gonna find all right. Oh, oh. Nice. You're listening to KSQD Santa Cruz 90.7 Colby Davidson. Um, what was the name of the song? That was Keep on Chasing Rainbows. Keep on Chasing Rainbows. So. When did you write that song? I wrote that in 2017 when I was living in uh, La Selva Beach. So what, what was the... I don't know, what's your process of writing a song? I mean, I, I feel like that is question. just such a creative endeavor to do. Are you someone that like writes like, okay, I'm going to go sit in a room and write a song, or is it more it comes to you? It comes to me. Okay. Definitely. I'll be sitting and then some phrase will come to me and I'll be like, I like that. And I'll build off it. And you know, a lot of the time it goes nowhere, but sometimes... For, Instance, this song it went somewhere. So, is it the actual phrase that if that gets to you? It's like it's not like the you know a chord or a melody. Like it usually starts with the actual. Usually, lyrics. yeah, it depends because I'm lucky enough where I could write music. I could write the entire song without lyrics. Okay. Or I could come up with lyrics and then write the you know, the music. Oh wow. Okay. Um, but for that song, that phrase came to me, and I sat with it and tried to expand upon it. And I said, "What does this mean?" Because it comes from my subconscious. It just yeah. comes there. Um, but a lot of songs, a few other songs, going to play today. Um, I'll be jamming with my band or by myself and trying to sing something and it comes out and I say, I like that. Have you ever like, you know, sometimes like, I'm really, you know, you're struggling to, to come up with something and you know, you're working at it. Like you feel like you have something and then it eventually like goes in a different direction and then it's like pure gold. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's more rare, but I mean, yeah. a lot of the time if I'm trying to force it, I'll sit on it okay. You know, I'll put yeah. it back because that's what Leonard Cohen would do. He'd sit on songs for years, you know, and work on them. So. And then when it like it just felt right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like collaborating? Like you have a band. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, actually, I've only collaborated about twice, okay. um, and that's something I struggle with. I'm trying to get into more is writing music with other people because all that of seems like that seems tough because you're you're both artistic, you know, creative people yeah. coming together. How does that like? Oh, exactly. Step on each other's toes there. Yeah, and I'm, I wonder if it's like they sit in a room and then something comes out or someone comes, I have this phrase, you know, what do, can you add lyrics to it? Yeah. And that's what I've tried to do with some of my bandmates. Like, you know, I got this phrase, I can't think of anything else. Can you come up with a second verse? And then, okay. yeah. So that's a good clever, yeah. I, we had somebody that was on a, a few weeks ago, and she says she doesn't even write her songs anymore. She just wants to sing them. Mm. And so, like, and she has an amazing voice. Mm. And so, you know, that's, she, that's just her creative, and, you know, you know as a, as a singer as well, I mean, there's so many ways you can express yourself. Oh, absolutely. Just by, you know, singing. Yeah. I took a uh, classical singing last semester and had to oh, sing wow. Italian music. Yeah. Wait, and so you actually like were singing like oh, classic. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. And my teacher, she told me like, you know, when you're singing a song, you're 
you're supposed to like put the motion out there like you're supposed to sing towards someone and that really helped me because like she has this little picture on her wall it's a it's a smiley face it's a okay. really bad like drawn picture and so when you sing you sing at it and uh, you imagine you're you know that person you think about the lyrics and you put yourself it's acting you know yeah. and that really puts you in the shoes and makes you feel the emotion now that's something I can imagine it gets difficult when you've done this song 40 50 oh, yeah. 100 times you're acting for four and a half minutes a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, and also, I mean, you play a song enough, it's automatic. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you catch yourself thinking about other things sometimes? What I do is, I'll start the song and I'll be automatic almost, and yeah. then I'll be like, all right, what's this, who is the person Get back I wrote the song it. about? And I'll imagine them, yeah. and my teacher said, imagine they're in the room, and so that's what I do. Then it gets even worse, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, no, that seems difficult. Um, well, let's, can we play another song? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so what's this song? I think I'm gonna do Roll Me Slowly, and this is another song where I came up with the chords, and then we were jamming, and I came up with the lyrics. I came up with the phrase, Roll Me Slowly. Okay. And I had no idea what that means, I still don't, but I got the vibe, I think. <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is called Roll Me Slowly. Roll Me Slowly on KSQD Santa Cruz. station ksqd santa cruz colby davidson what was the name of that song that was roll me slowly so when did you write that song i wrote that song uh in january oh so like that's a super new song yeah 
Yeah. Is it kind of exciting to play new songs? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, because like, and they're like, they're <laughs> fresh and it's like all vibrant. No, yeah. I, what's exciting about that song is that I actually don't have the second verse down. I'm, oh, really? I make up the second half of that second verse every time. Every time. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, we always like, are like, everyone's looking at me like, when is it going to be, Max? And I was like, send it in time. And then we just do it. We hit it every time. <laughs> Wait, so like when you started the song right now, yeah. You still did not know what it was going to be. I have a general plan for the second <laughs> verse, but still, like, I, I improv it and I just add words, you know, it's kind of oh, like... Oh, that is so funny. Yeah. Well, it turns out great. So, every time, like, someone hears that song, it's, like, an exclusive. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, uh, before we begin, I have a couple more questions for you. I want to talk about your voice, because I think you have such an amazing voice. Thank you. But... My band, uh, People of the Sun, and, uh, you know, if you ever saw them in Santa Cruz, but, uh... My teacher said, I think you're going to do what he does later. And he was right. And I did. I said, no, I don't think I ever will do like folk, kind of folk rock stuff. And uh, <laughs> and there it is. Mr. Siddons was right. Now he's, uh, I think right now, this summer, he's touring with Jesse Daniel. Um, oh, uh, really? Yeah. Do you know Jesse Daniel? Yeah, Del went down to Georgia, right? Um, oh, it's the Charlie Daniels band. No, no. Jesse Daniel is a country singer. In town. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, I know him, though. Yeah. yeah. He's got tattoos, right? Yep, yep. That's yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah, so um, they're they're on tour right now somewhere. Actually, I think they're gonna be playing somewhere in town somewhere soon. I think Moe's Alley, yeah, at some point. I feel like they're always playing Moe's Alley. It's good. But, right? um, so I have two questions for you. The first one I want to know is about your voice because I feel I've heard people mention about your voice. I mentioned, I thought about it myself as like it's a unique voice, but it's like it's something you really want to listen to. Thank you. Yeah, and like how much work. Did that take, or do you just like, just this like, comes out of my mouth, and it's great. Like, uh, how does that work? So anyone that went to middle school and probably high school with me can attest that it was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, and I kept working at it, and it kept getting better. And I've had a few vocal coaches, but a lot of it too was just, you know, um, learning through YouTube. That's like how I taught myself guitar. Really? Um, and yeah, just like I, I'm a strong believer that anyone could sing if they just know the technique. Um, and, and like what techniques for your voice? Yeah, right? I mean, a lot of my friends are always like, yeah, my throat hurts after a gig. It's like, that's because you're singing wrong, you know? Yeah. You're yeah. straining your voice. And so one thing I had to come to like terms with is like, I'm not a tenor. Okay. You know, I'm baritone. And that's actually shaped the music too, but I can't be Robert Plant as much <laughs> as I want to, but I can never belt that much, but... There's not that many people I can. <laughs> yeah, and so just, you know, practicing and honing it. And then I was super insecure about it a long time. And then people started telling me it was good and I started to believe them. Well, it, it worked out. So what are some of your, like, your challenges uh, of, of your voice that you had to, like, overcome? Definitely um, range, you know, being, like, a baritone. Uh, you're kind of, like, sentenced to not do rock music almost. Okay. You know, um, there's that, uh, tuning, um, you know, voice cracking. Knowing your range is a big thing, you know, because okay. you, you think you're going to, ah, you know, <laughs> high up there, but it's going to sound bad. Yeah. And I'm not a big fan of falsetto. So don't, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah. It's just fig, you know, putting the songs in the right keys. I never play a gig now where my throat hurts. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And then I also, through classical singing, I learned how to properly sing, like fully. Because I've had two other vocal coaches, but like there's certain ways that you're supposed to open your face and your vocal cavity, like your, uh, yeah. your mouth, so it resonates a certain way. I was listening to a, um, an interview with Dave Gaughan from Depeche Mode, and he, the band at one point, kind of later in the career, said, you know what, we're not going to actually make another album with you until you get voice lessons. <laughs> yeah. And this is a guy that's been, you know, have these like number one big songs forever, but you know, 14 years later, and he actually took voice coaching lessons, whatever, um, in like, you know, much like opera and a couple of different yeah. things just to like, figure out like his voice, I guess. And, and it did, it made a difference. And now it's like, you know, I'm, for being an older person, he still has this really strong voice. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. I feel like, how many songs do we have? Like, two more songs? Yeah, I think so, two more. I should probably do the song I was telling you about. Yeah, so this is the new song, right? Yeah, it's a new song, and uh, we're mixing it right now, and then when I get the mix done, I'm going to send it to the videographer, but uh, it's called Capture the Wind. Capture the Wind. Okay. A lot of nature imagery in my songs. Nice. So Capture the Wind, Colby Davis, and you are listening to KSQD Santa Cruz. If I can't capture the wind, no, I know that I will die. I remember her smile like a, like a fading sunset She was something special out of all I have met 
She cut my heart warm When the winter winds came Just like the wind she could She could never be tame So like a fool I wasted I wasted all my days Just trying to find a way Oh, to make her stay But everybody knows Ain't no one And you never caught the winds I'll keep on trying Though I know I'll never win Don't even know where to begin That don't mean That don't mean A man can't try If I can't capture the wind No, I know I will die My name out Oh, when you're passing by Maybe it's for the better Honey, if you never try So I'll just sit here on this park bench We had our first kiss I'll sit here and let the snow cover me as I reminisce Cause memories are the only way to capture the winds And all the naysayers say living in the past is a sin They don't know just how good it all hurts to sit here and let all these beautiful phantoms come from me. And I know, Lord, I know, ain't nobody ever caught the wind. Don't even know where to begin That don't mean That don't mean A man can't try If I can't capture the wind No, I know If I can't capture the wind No, I know Capture the wind, no, I know that I will die. You're listening to KSQD Santa Cruz, that was Colby Davidson. I don't know what that, what I was thinking during that song is it's amazing the music that comes out of this show. And I don't think I'm like tooting our own horn because it's not us. But like every week we have these amazing musicians, and I, don't know, I get like this like private concert, but you all in Radio Land get to listen to live music every single week from like these local musicians. So if you know of a really good local musician in town that you would like to hear on our show, uh, 
email me, Matthew at EventSantaCruz.com. Again, Matthew at EventSantaCruz.com. And we can get them on the show. Um, I, I really, I was blown away. That was such a good song. I can't wait to hear the, like, because, I mean, that was an acoustic version, yeah. of course. Um, what, how is that song going to change? Okay, that's a good question. Um, basically, I added some slide guitar, you okay. know, because I'm a big fan of, like, <laughs> Bob Dylan and, like, that kind of, like, sad, you know, his, his Western album. Okay. Um, and uh, among other things. There's going to be that. There's going to be drums. More like Mumford & Sons drums. It's oh, not like straight-up nice. drum kit. Um, shakers. Uh, and then I had swell guitars, like Gregory Allen Iskovoff. He does this one song live where he has like this kind of swell guitar thing. It's going to be that and uh, some vocal harmonies. So you've already recorded it. Yes. And it's like you're in the mixing phase? The mixing phase, yeah. I got so it. Is, and it's not, is it more than just this? You have like an EP coming out? Or? Just this, because it's yeah. actually, I mean, here's a secret for you artists that are listening. Uh, it's best to put singles out in this day and age until you've garnered a little bit of attention, then you put an EP out. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a single for now. So you, you have some ideas there about the, in the music business, but what's, what's your trajectory? That's, That's a good question. Right. Yeah, like how, I mean, because... This is what you want to do yeah. for your living. If I could make this sell, you know, yeah. it's always been my dream, I think. And it wasn't for attention or anything. It's just because I love playing no, music. No, that, that, and we've talked about that so many times in the show. I mean, if all else fails, fails, you have this amazing talent that you can actually go in a room and play guitar. Thank you. And sing. Yeah. So that's good. <laughs> but it would be great if you can actually you know, make a living. And it's, it's not always pure talent. No, it's not. A no, lot of people are industry have plants. That part. Like, how do you get it to the mass world? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of people are industry plants in this day and age. You know, they have rich parents or people in the music industry, and they're, I don't want to name names, but, like, Billie Eilish, I heard, is one of those people. Are you serious? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, this is just very yeah. anecdotal <laughs> evidence, but I have a friend that has a friend that knows her from L.A. I right. said she's very much like a Beverly Hills kind of girl, and this whole personality shit is, like, made up. Yeah, I have heard that part, yeah. the personality part. But that's yeah. that's true, I think, par for the course for any artist, yeah. know, almost. No, and it, I mean, you are pretty non like a show in some way. I mean, Madonna yeah. made up most of her career. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> was, yeah, but, like, how do you, though, and how does Colby, like, make it in the industry? Like, what, 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 what do you, what's your plan? I mean, if I could tour and, you know, do that for the rest of my life yeah. with a band and... You know, play some nice venues like Red Rocks or Royal Albert Hall. I mean, oh, that Red would... Oh, Red Rocks. You know, since I was a little <laughs> kid, I mean, like, being, like, seven years old, um, watching U2's video, Sunday Bloody Sunday, yeah. at Red Rocks, I would, like, that was, like, one of my bucket lists. And even a seven-year-old kid at watching MTV, it's like, I want to go there one yeah. time. Yeah. Definitely. So, so, but, like, I mean, that's not easy. Like, you can say, like, I want to go tour. I mean, that's what I want to do. Is it basically... You're just gonna have to keep on touring so you build up that audience. Yeah, I mean, because that's the only thing you can do right now, right? That's like how musicians. Oh, I mean, audience yeah. is everything, and it's always been that way. Um, of course, there's social media and other stuff to get. You oh work, yeah, but, yeah. And that's something I'm working on a lot recently. But um, when I went to, I did Berkeley Five Week in high school, and one of the things that uh, I think it was a drummer of Taj Mahal said, he said he had some people in the music industry come in. They said, if you can't inspire people in your hometown, the 25 mile radius. It doesn't matter where you go, you're not going to get that. And so okay. you got to generate buzz in your hometown. Oh, nice. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I tried to do that here, but uh, it wasn't really working, so I went down south and trying to work that circuit now. And I'm going to come up here in the fall with my full band, hopefully, and play some okay. shows. Okay, so when you come up in the fall and you bring your full band, yeah. please come back in the show. Let's have the full full band in here. Absolutely. Let's promote those shows. Opportunity that Colby has coming up. Can you, can you and we're going to play one more song. But Colby, we just talked off air, and I just, that's why I had to stop the, the song, because I want everybody else to hear this story. So what is going on? So I haven't announced this yet, and it's still up in the air, but uh, I was lucky enough, I think if you follow my Instagram, uh, you saw that I met Alan Parsons at NAMM uh, yeah. this last uh, winter. Super cool. I talked to his wife for 45 minutes, and I also my music educator, one of my music educators, Beth Hollenbeck, uh, was, she's good friends with him and knows him, and so... I'm supposed to go record with him at some point in the future in the Santa Barbara studio, but that would be amazing. Yeah, and yeah. I wrote a paper on Dark Side of the Moon in high school. Like, oh, really? I love Alan Parsons. I love Pink Floyd. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Okay. Well, we hope that happens. Whatever yeah. we need to do to like you know send it out to the world, there <laughs> we do it. But that is super cool. So we have a little more time. Um, I want to find out a little more about where our audience can you know 
find out more about your music or in these like when that actually happens or other stuff when the new Definitely. song comes out. Um, but let's hear a song. You have a song from with your band, right? Yeah, my, so I have a rock band, uh, Analog Spirit, and we've played a lot. Um, it's four, you know, three main members: me, Nathan Kingsley, and uh, Tom De La Cruz. And this is a song we put out it's on Spotify and iTunes right now. It's called Breeze, and it's Analog Spirit. I'm gonna play that song really quick. Wait, so the band's called Analog Spirit? Yeah, but okay. my act right now, I've been playing the last you know hour is Colby Davidson. Yeah. If you wanna follow me, you wanna hear the music. It's on Instagram. It's Colby Davidson Music, just like Harley Davidson. You know, Sam Davidson. Colby like the cheese. <laughs> and then I got a website. So please, I love you know if you came out to a show and followed and everything. So Facebook cool. too. Okay, so if you didn't hear that, just in case, we'll do it at the top of the hour. Yeah. So let's hear another song. Alright, this one's called Breeze. Come on, let's go. Keep on rolling on the breeze. Nothing important to see Now pushed off from the ship Just floating in space Ain't got no tether Ain't tied to no Come on, little lady, let's leave the human race. So let's go floating on the breeze. Kick off from this rock and do as you please. Cause I don't want no. on KSQD Santa Cruz. So, Colby, I want to make sure that everybody knows about where to find you again. And we mentioned a little earlier, but, um, and I was going to say, you know, go to Instagram, but you know that Instagram and Facebooks are having is having issues today. Oh, yeah, that's right. I know. I thought I it was my that. fault at first. I was <laughs> like, you know, why isn't the picture showing? But, um, so if they want to go to your Instagram, and, you know, it's still kind of working. So, yeah. where, where do they go? Uh, Colby Davidson Music, and then if you are old-fashioned, you just want to go on the web. I have a website I'm actually announcing right now too. Yeah. Uh, it's ColbyDavidson.com. Uh, okay, cool. So got there, you know, kind of like you know, subscribe so you get up to dates on you know when that song gets released yeah. that you did a couple of times ago. Tour and, dates. Yeah, and then you know probably if you go to the website, you'll get links to like your Spotify and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So super cool. 
Okay, well, thank you so much for being on the show. It Thanks for having me. Super fun. I can't wait. I'm gonna go home right now and spend hours, you know, you know, flying that up to or downloading that up to YouTube. So uh, if you go to eventsantacruz.com tomorrow morning, all the songs you heard will be up on the on the World Wide Web. Um, I think that's it. Oh, we have one more. Can thing. I give a quick shout out? Yes. I want to give a quick shout out to all the amazing music educators in Santa Cruz County that, you know, I taught myself a lot, but they also taught me a lot. Uh, Jim Stewart of Socal High and Beth Hollenbeck, Scotts Valley, as awesome. well as Rick Walker. They are all amazing and we have, we're lucky to have such an amazing, you know, musicians that are teaching the young ones. So. I wonder if that's why we have such like a talented pool of musicians. It's yeah. probably that.